Well, hello, Shoreline Church. This is your devotional for Tuesday, June 9th. And we're looking at Psalm 108. We're moving back to the Psalms and really just letting the Holy Spirit speak to us these, these songs of praise or of heartache, of sorrow or of joy uh, that we can sing in the heights and the depths of life because God's given us this songbook with 150 songs that cover the whole spectrum of our human emotion. So, so try to get the feel of the emotion, the heartbeat of Psalm 108. We're gonna read verses one through six. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake harp and lyre, I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Save us. Help us with your right hand that those who love you may be delivered. One of the interesting things about many of the Psalms, and you've probably been noticing this over the last couple of months as we've walked through the Psalms together, is that one Psalm can talk about praising and glorifying God and at the same time about heartache and pain and struggle. And here's the thing, if we can't still praise and worship God when times are tough, we won't praise and worship God very often because there's always difficult things going on in our life or someone we love and care about. And so I invite you to think about what the Psalm calls us to do to celebrate God, not, not just who he is, but for what he's done and not just for what he's done, but for who he is. We have to not, not only say, God, I thank you for what you've given and what you do, but God, your very character is worthy of praise. And then the psalm talks about celebrating God publicly, you know, before the world, but before the nations. Let your faith shine. Let the light of your love for Jesus shine beyond yourself to others. And then the psalm talks about that God's love is a great love. I hope you're walking in that love. And I pray that you're so filled with the love of God that it overflows to every person you encounter. Be filled up with his love, not just to selfishly hold on to it, but to overflow to others. And then the psalm says in verse four, he's faithful. He is a faithful God. Celebrate God's faithfulness. How has he been faithful to you? What has he done in the past? What has he done, what has he done in the last week? He has been faithful. Celebrate. And then the end of the portion that we read in verse six is this, is this cry, save us, O God. Save us. Whatever you're facing right now with all that's happening in our world, from medical challenges to economic challenges to political challenges to racial challenges to, to personal heart challenges. God, save us. Save us from others. Save us from the enemy. Save us from ourselves. Cry out to God for salvation. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you are good and you are loving and you are glorious, but we have to cry out, save us, oh Lord. Yes, Lord, save us from our sins by Jesus Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection, but also save us day by day when we wander off your paths, when we're in harm's way. And Lord, we pray for people all around our world who are suffering and struggling, all around our nation, all around our community. Save each person from what they face right now, but ultimately, Lord, save them with the grace of Jesus. Turn their hearts and their eyes to you that they would call on your name. Oh God, thank you that you are worthy of our praise. We lift you up and worship you this day in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've got some wonderful, exciting news for you. Uh, this Sunday, we're gathering for our first on-campus worship service, an outdoor service at 9.30 in the morning with social distancing, lots of details coming your way, but just hang in there for just a moment. I want someone to share with you some details about this coming Sunday and what you need to do to be part of that service. God bless you. Hello, it's great to have this opportunity to address our congregation again today. It has been several weeks since you've seen me here in this spot following Pastor Kevin's devotions, and I'm happy to report that things have changed a lot since then. We are so happy to have received the okay from our state and county officials that allow us to gather in an outdoor environment um, together for a worship service. Our staff has been back in the office this last week, and we're working together on all the details that go into putting um, together this service. Many of you have 
have loved the online worship services, and or maybe you're only able to be a part of a shoreline um, because we are online. And so it's for that reason that if you're participating in a Sunday morning service online, you won't see any changes. But we are going to continue to offer three great services each Sunday at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. In addition, um, if you're local and ready to gather with us again in person, uh, we're going to be excited to have you here this Sunday, June 14th, at either 9.30 or 11.30 a.m. But there are some details that I need to share with you about Sunday that are very important to the success of these services and the safety of us all. So, number one, um, registration is required, and I need to say this strongly. We're working hard here at Shoreline to design a space in our courtyard and in the upper part of our parking lot um, that will accommodate everyone who has registered. We're going to be laying out carpet squares in advance of your arrival um, that designate a spot specific to the number of people that you told us were coming with you, and that it also allows for a six-foot distance from the next family next to you. Um, so we're not going to be able to accommodate anyone who has not registered or people who want to bring extra people with them on this day. Um, it's, it is looking like we are going to reach our maximum capacity for this survey, so for this first Sunday, and I know we're going to learn a lot. So we ask for your patience. We ask for um, you to register early. We ask you to be patient with us if we tell you that the spots are filled up for this week, um, because we're certainly going to do this again. And so um, there are a couple more details that we want to share with you. One is that there's a FAQ sheet on our website with lots of details, but the, the two that I want to highlight in addition to registering um, is that face coverings will be required. We're going to ask that as you enter and exit our seating area that you do have a face covering on. Also, it's really important that you know that we're going to be providing carpet squares that designate the space, but we will need you to bring some sort of a camp chair um, or a blanket and a, for you to sit on um, while you're watching the service. So this way we have you pack it in, um, take it out with you, um, and we will not be providing any chairs. So I want you to remember that. So there's, again, as I mentioned, there's a lot more details on our website that you can um, take a look at about parking and about the service. And if you find that you have other questions that we were not able to answer in that, in that space, please feel free to email us at info at shoreline.church. Um, one thing we know that this is not going to look like services did prior to the shelter in place order, but that's not our goal. We're super excited to bring everybody back together um, to provide a space that we can worship God together and be together in community as a church body. So we're excited for this first step that we're taking here at Shoreline and we hope to see you Sunday.